Can you explain a little bit more about our situation with sex education in the United States and maybe if you know how it compares to other countries? Yeah, um, I mostly can really speak to the U.S. because that's really where my my work has centered in terms of my master's of public health. It was really U.S. based, uh, but we're definitely not doing well. I will say that uh, the stats that I'm about to read, a few of them are all from the Guttmacher Institute, which is a leading policy organization in the U.S. that does really great work and research around sexual health in the U.S., And so here are a couple of stats that I want you to be aware of. Um, Only 18 U.S. states require sexual health program content to be medically accurate. Only 20 U.S. states and D.C. require that information be provided on contraception. And 39 states and D.C. require that information be provided on abstinence. That's great. You want to give the option, right? However, 29 states require that abstinence be stressed, right? So there's a difference between covering abstinence as a valid choice and stressing that abstinence is the correct or the better option, right? Um, Only 10 U.S. states and D.C. require inclusive content with regard to sexual orientation. And so hearing all of these, I assume you might be thinking like, this is not great. (laughs) And the reason for that is because we don't have enough people who are passing these laws who have experience with comprehensive sexual health education, even though there is abundant, an abundance of research that show that when young people have access to age-appropriate, comprehensive, medically accurate sex education in the places where that's the norm, the STI rate decreases. The unplanned pregnancy rate decreases. And the inverse is true. We know that where there's abstinence-only education being taught, that STI rates skyrocket and unplanned pregnancy rates skyrocket. And so the research is there. Um, It's also inhumane. I think it's a human rights violation to only have access to abstinence only education, Um, especially when, you know, we hear the stat that only 18 states require program content to be medically accurate. Like what what are those teachers saying? Right. Like, yeah, that's going on there. That's what confounds me because. What so what it, what are they saying? Like what it like what are they telling kids if it's not medically accurate? Bad stuff, right? Like <laughs> teachers essentially would be able to say something along the lines of, hey, like if you uh have sex before marriage, then you're, you know, uh you're worthless. Or if you have mm. sex before marriage, Um, that will cause infertility or cancer or, you know, things essentially or things around masturbation, right? Like there are so many myths that are so harmful around masturbation when masturbation is actually a really healthy practice for people and most people do it. So we might as well just give them the information that they need for them to, for them to feel good about themselves and their bodies. And we don't do that. Right. And so I think like, it's extremely problematic, not only because lies are being told to young people, that's first and foremost the reason why it's problematic, but it's also problematic because these are very normal everyday things that kids should be able to learn about so that when they are ready eventually to have sex or to masturbate or whatever the case may be, um, that they feel prepared and not shamed for their actions. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about like those no fap communities and like the no nut November and this whole kind of movement for like against like anti masturbation? I'm not into it. I think that generally speaking, if people want to decide that they want to take a break from masturbation, that's their prerogative. I'm not somebody to tell somebody what they should or shouldn't do with their own body. But I think the root of that is kind of this idea of like, oh, well, I want to be more masculine and have more control over my sexual drive. And nobody cares. <laughs> like, I just I just feel like that's you like not masturbating for a month does not make you more masculine. It does not prove anything. 
Um, if you want to feel good in your body, you should not feel bad about doing that. You should not shame yourself. You should allow yourself to have that little bit of pleasure. Yeah. It's interesting because I often see it tied up with these whole like better yourselves memes, um, you know, make more money um, Instagram accounts. And it's it seems to just be where they're kind of just talking about lessening like your like these things that give you a lot of dopamine, right? Which I think is fine if you because look, we can all fall into those traps of watching too much Netflix, scrolling sure. on Instagram for too long. Like there's so many things that give us pleasure that we can totally overdo food, all of these things. But it seems like if that pleasure that we might be overdoing is is masturbation or um, something sex related, that there's like so much shame associated with that, that it like, I don't know, I think that really fucks with people's heads. Yeah. I mean, yeah, totally agree. Like any habit could turn into an unhealthy habit, but masturbation, again, tied to religion where it's this idea of like, that's a sin. Don't touch yourself. Uh, I was watching. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of like, okay, let him watch. I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> it's just like, it needs to be more normalized. Like again, most people do it the more and more we pretend like people don't, then we're just doing a disservice to people and we're not allowing them to just feel good in their bodies for something that's actually healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, What is the most common sex ed question that you tend to get? So yeah, we're hitting right, right on the topic. So the top two, I would say, is some form of the condom broke, am I pregnant? Or my penis was near her vagina and pre-cum was there. Am I, is she pregnant? Like some form of that. Or like I'm masturbating too much. Like how, what do I do about it? Or like I feel so guilty that I'm masturbating. And so luckily we've had these questions so many times that we've created resources where people can click on our Instagram. We have a highlight that says the top five sex questions that we get. And so if you're one of those people, I just kind of direct you to there because it's honestly too many people for me to like individually answer. But I think that goes back to the the foundation of people don't know their own bodies. Like they don't understand when ovulation happens. They don't know what a menstrual cycle is sometimes like that terminology. They don't understand that, you know, the pullout method is like 78% effective, right? So like maybe you're pregnant, like it's possible. Um, but I can't tell you that through the internet. So it's really important that people like go to their own community health professional and like take a test after they have first missed their period. Or if it's soon enough after, like take a plan B or take a prescription emergency contraception called Ella or use an IUD as emergency contraception. So, uh, and then if that fails, you know, understanding your options, if you don't want a pregnancy, uh, you know, what what do abortion options look like for you in your state, in your community? Um, so, yeah, those those two are probably the most the most common ones that we get. Hello, my amazing listeners, you know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.